Hey, this is Mikey Borup with PremiumBeat.com, and in this tutorial, I want to teach you how to create this heat displacement map that's fully customizable. Now, in the example I showed you, there was a torch with some fire and some text, but the main thing I want to teach you in this is the heat displacement, which is all the distortion that happens because of the heat. You're also going to learn some, um, some composition techniques, but that's not going to be the main focus. So let's get started. Um, if you remember, I had a, a brick background, and this is just a brick texture. And I'm going to use that as the background. And then on top of that, I had a picture of a torch. And I'm going to just quickly go in and um, mask this out. OK, so there's my background and my torch. Now let me just do a little bit to this torch. What I want to do actually is pre-compose this. So Command-Shift-C if you're on a Mac. Control shift c if you're on a Windows computer. And I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition. Let's call this torch. Now let's go into that composition. Uh, take that torch. Let's duplicate it. And this top layer, let's go to Effect, Color Correction, and Exposure. And I'm just going to crank the exposure up really bright. And then what I want to do is go into that layer and let's add an ellipse mask to it. And then since there's two masks, let's come in here and have this subtract and then invert. And then what I want to do is I just hit F on my keyboard and brings up the feather controls on the mask. And let's just go in and make this the tip of this. Um, nice and bright because there's going to be some fire you know going on so just the tip you can see all I'm doing is just brightening up the tip there so let's go back into comp one now we have this torch ready for some flame and then we have the background so let's bring in our flame now I'm using some just stock footage this is from video copilot action essentials and you can really use any stock footage of flame that you want as long as it works for what you're you know trying to accomplish and let's just stick that on and uh, there we are there's some flame now I do want to kind of let's do some compositing techniques to make this look a little nicer now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this flame so I'm going to duplicate it two times and let me do some compositing now. So what I want to do is this bottom one, I actually want to go to Effect, Matte, and let's add a simple choker to it. Let's turn off these top two layers so we can see what we're doing. And I just want to choke that in a little bit so the edges aren't there. Now with this top one, let's go into the toggle switches modes, and let's make that to screen. And then the next one, we will go to Add. And then after we take Add, we can kind of drop the opacity a little bit. And then maybe go in and let's add a bit of a blur. Adds a bit of a glow to it. Let's drop the opacity a little bit more. There we go. Now, the reason why I have it on there three times is this normal, um, the mode where it's set to normal, I want this so it's not transparent because what we can do now is if I take some text and if it's white text and it's behind, well, then it, the fire is going to cover some of it, uh, of it up. But if it's just in the screen, if it's behind just right here with the screen mode, well, then it's not going to cover up the white text. It's just going to, um, the white's still going to show through. So in my example, I had some text, and it, it was white text. It looked kind of colored because of the light I had on there. But what I did was just this right here with um, some normal. And again, if I take off the choker, then you've got this um, kind of this outline that's not very nice so I like to add that in there and um, there we go again still I think that glow is a little bit too much let's just bring that down a little bit okay 
So let's now go into kind of creating this, uh, just the rest of this fire look before we go into the displacement map. And what I did is just I added a light. So in order for lights to work, uh, your layers need to be 3D. So click on torch, make that 3D, and click on the brick background and make that 3D. Now let's go to layer, new, light. And let's do kind of a uh, light, uh, kind of an orange light. Click OK. And what I want to do is the light options. I don't want to point. Let's do a spotlight to kind of give it more of a fall off. And now I can kind of adjust better where the light is is casting from this uh, from this torch. So let's go into the cone feather. Let's bring that up and the cone angle up as well. And about like that. Now something I can do to kind of make this look more realistic is I can go into the intensity. I'm going to hit option click on the keyboard and I'm going to type wiggle. And let's just go 10 times a second at 10 frames should be plenty enough. And as we go through there, you can see the light is flickering a little bit um, with the with the flame. Okay, so that's my basic composition to get things going. Now I'm going to just go ahead and delete this text because I don't want it there. Now the next thing I want to do is is the most important part is the heat displacement. Now there's lots of ways to do heat displacement. I can come in and do like a turbulent displace. Um, let's actually bring up a new adjustment layer. If I do a turbulent displace, let's go into distort. Yeah, it creates lots of displacement, but I can't really localize it just to this one area. Now I can just duplicate it and add some masks and things like that, but I still got this weird edge going on. So I want to show you a better way of doing this. So let's go ahead and take off this turbulent displace, and I'm going to create a new solid. And I want this solid to be at 50% gray. So right here where it says HSB, let's just come in here and put 50% right there. Click OK. And then this is going to be my basis for my noise I'm going to create for the displacement map. So let's come in here. Let's just pre-compose. Call this displacement. Let's go into the displacement map. Now let's add an effect to this layer. Effect, noise and grain, turbulent noise. And then here is just the blank plain noise, the basic. Now let's just go in here, maybe change this to dynamic. I kind of like the look of that a little bit better. Let's uh, up the contrast. And maybe let's come in here to the scale. Um, let's scale that up a little bit. Now what I want to do is also I want this thing to evolve. So I'm going to come into the, where here it says evolution. Let's actually just go to it down here and the effects down in the timeline. So right here it says evolution. I'm going to hold down option or alt and hit click right on the stopwatch and it brings up my expression dialog box. And here I'm going to just type in time and then asterisk and let's go 250. And what this is going to do is it's going to take my current time, times it by 250, and have that for the evolution settings. And so it's a way of just having it constantly animate without having to keyframe the start and the stop. So depending, it doesn't even matter how long this layer is, it'll still continue to animate because there's no beginning and ending keyframe. Okay, so that is my basic displacement map. And if I come back in here to my comp one, and you can see it here. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn this off. We can even bring it down to the bottom so it's out of the way. Let's take this adjustment layer. Let's go to Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Let's come in where it says Displacement Map Layer. Let's pick the layer we just created. And let's maybe crank this up to about 50 and 25. And you can see already it's starting to displace. But again, it's everywhere. But what we can do, now I can take this composition, displacement, I can come in here and I can mask just certain spots. 
when I come back into the comp, it's just right here. You can see exactly where it's being displaced, right where the mask is. Now the problem with this is I have to keep on going back and forth. Um, I can come in here and I can feather this mask, go back. Um, it's a little bit better. Let's come back in here and maybe increase the contrast. Um, but it's kind of a pain to go back and forth. So a little trick I like to do is I'm going to take this displacement down here. And I can't just add a mask to this because the way that the, the effect works on the adjustment layer and on this is it bypasses the mask. So the mask needs to be in the pre-comp uh, in order for it to work. So what I can do, though, is I can add a mask to this displacement map right here. And let's just do that. Let's add a mask. And then what I want to do is I'm going to open up these mask settings here, go into this displacement composition. I'm going to just drag this up here so I, I can see what's going on. And I'm going to pick whip and link this mask to this one. So I'm going to hit Alt, click on the stopwatch, use the pick whip, and just link them all together. And now this mask is completely based off of this one in my main composition. So I can go ahead and take this, put it back with the others. Now what I can do is on this mask, is I can move this around and you can see the displacement map is now mapping to that mask and everything is working just fine. So now I can, while I'm watching here and on this layer, I can kind of adjust how I want things. Maybe bring this in a little bit. And let's go to my feather mask tool. Maybe feather this out, bring it in down here, feather it out really tall on top because that's where the heat is its rising up. And then um, there's a good displacement mask. Now it's, it's a little bit crazy. I actually want to take this adjustment layer and bring it underneath the fire footage so it's just behind. And let's maybe go back into the mask and bring this down so it's just kind of localized near more the base. And then the parts that are going up is going to be the feathered parts. So there's still going to be some heat rising, but it's not going to be as strong. Okay, so there's kind of a, a nice displacement map. Now let's uh, maybe do a little bit more to this seems a little bit intense so what I can do is let's come back into this displacement and I can add to this let's add just a fast blur and then this will kind of soften everything out so let's bring that to about 26 and there's everything softened and it's a little bit too far down below so let's go back to my displacement down here and let's bring that in I want some I do want some displacement here but not down onto the torch as much and really that's about all there is to it to create this cool displacement map as we can see let's put some text behind it and it will affect let's go ahead and drop this down below the adjustment layer and you can see how cool that is as I just pan through there pretty darn cool. Now there's a lot to this and uh, lots of different linking and kind of things together and I've created a template to make it easier for you so what I can what I'm gonna do is let's just um, drag and drop this template right into the project. Let's come in here let's go right to comp one I'm gonna just double click this to open and let's take um, let's go back and get this brick texture and let's just show you with the brick texture and it's basically a, a displacement map already made for you. And so here it is right here. I can come in and and move things around. We've got this 
variable uh, with feather on here already, and it's already linked up to the displacement map. If I come in here, you know, this displacement map right here. And also, let's see, there's the effect. This is a adjustment layer, so it's going to affect everything below, but there's also some controls I stuck on here. So there's a speed, the amount, the scale, I can soften it, and then here's the displacement map effect. So right now for speed, it's set at 50. If I bring that down to 5, it's going to be a lot slower. If I bring that up to 100, it's going to be a lot faster. Now the amount, we can see as I as I slide this down from 0 to 100 you can see it just there's less displacement now let's go to the scale scale it up and it's a lot bigger of displacement bring it down and there's smaller little ripples and the soften see how hard and kinda jagged everything looks I bring up the soften and it kind of smooths everything out. So that is the uh, that's the template. It's available. You can just download it from Premium Beat. If you're on the blog, it's down in the description. You can find the link to that. If you're on YouTube or on Vimeo, just click on the link that brings you to the blog where you can then download this template. It works for After Effects CS6 and above. Um, so if you're on CS 5.5 or below, I'm sorry, um, but we have it set for CS 6 and above. So I hope you enjoy it. And again, I encourage you to try to build this on your own because that's how you learn After Effects is by doing things. But uh, it's nice to have this template so you can just drag and drop it in and everything's already set for you. So that's the tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about displacement maps and kind of how to use it to do a heat displacement kind of some really cool stuff. I really enjoyed this tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below. And I will get to them. I do follow these tutorials on the blog, on YouTube, and on Vimeo. So if you have any questions on any of those platforms, just feel free to ask and I can answer them for you. And if you're looking for some great stock music or stock sound effects, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com. Um, they've got some really great stuff. Also, their blog great tutorials, especially the After Effects ones, and you can learn a lot from them. So check out their blog, check out their site. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.